Hey everyone, Zervas here from Casuals. Today we're going to talk about Home Realms coming to Call of Dragons. Now, this is not something new. We knew it was coming, but we finally have a lot of information. So I'll let you know exactly how it is going to work, what to expect, as well as the good and the very bad stuff that could kill the game, in my opinion, if they bring the same as they did in Rise of Kingdom. So the way this is going to work is almost exactly like Rise of Kingdom. Now, the way the game works currently in Call of Dragon is, as you can see, Season, Battle Run 1, Tamaris 1, Battle Run 2. All these ones are basically just a gathering of multiple servers that you, every time you join a new uh, season, you migrate to a new server or stay to your own server. And then you get put into a matchmaking, which will put you with dozens of other servers and that is going to be your season now if you look back at season one for example it was different season one you started on one server and then you had to fight for that server's control and then at the end you had the dragon and then from then on it went to season two where it became matching multiple servers together as you can see here but home kingdoms are going to be basically the same as season one was meaning that you are going to be in one server you're going to capture the dragon and then the person who does have the dragon or the leader of this server the king is going to be the leader of the alliance that has the dragon and then from that server when a new season start it will be like a kvk in rise of kingdom which is gonna be like as a svs server versus server uh, and this is going to be where you migrate temporarily to a new kvk or svs server and then like this you will have war and then when that is over you automatically get put back into your old server you don't have to migrate, you don't have to do anything. You are just simply living on this server that is yours. And then when there is a fight, a season, a KVK happening, you're temporarily transported into that world. You fight. If you win, you get the rewards. And then when you are done, you get back to your primary server. So nothing changes. The alliances don't change. The levels don't change. Nothing uh, gets erased or reset in that way. And you live on that server temporarily you farm you prepare and then when there's kvk seasons you get to migrate temporarily and go fight on that server so this is how it works in rise of kingdom and it is how it is going to work in call of dragons starting in approximately i think late may is when they've said this is going to be coming uh, so if you read here this is basically what it's going to say and the one thing to note is that currently if you are in season one by the end of your season you are basically going to become a home realm you don't have to do anything if you are in season two or later like i am we are going to end our current season and then i'm guessing we will get to choose a new home server when that server is introduced and we will all get to migrate to it most likely for free or maybe for gems i'm not sure uh, but in any case i'm sure it won't be an expensive process for the first time when you choose or when you get your first home realm uh, because otherwise it would not make much sense obviously since it's not a choice and then from there you will choose a home realm and that will be your permanent home for your account you will very hardly be able to move from that unless you are a spender and this is where it becomes very tricky and complicated because in the way it's going to work is quite expensive if you want to move so this new migration system will work in a, a bit of a confusing way it won't be so different than what we have currently where at the end of a season you get to choose and have gems um, instead obviously every server that is currently going to be a home kingdom is going to be basically in a season progress of course because people are going to be in different progress in the game so people who just started don't get to mingle with people who've been playing for a year but within that realm of servers that have uh, approximately the same age you basically at any time uh, outside of a season versus season or a kvk are going to be able to migrate to a new server and join that as your permanent home now this is going to be as i said the same season server so at the same kind of timing server as yours the same age and for this you're going to be needing migration permits now this is going to be something that varies based on their power this is the exact same thing as rise of kingdom and there is a cooldown period meaning that you won't be able to transfer regularly it'll be a few weeks if not a few months before you can migrate to a new home kingdom so when you do choose a home kingdom you have to make sure that you like the king, you like the alliance that's leading that kingdom, uh, and you have uh, a good relationship because you will be stuck there for multiple weeks, if not months, before you can move again. And the other part that they're not talking about here is the migration permits, which are usually extremely expensive if you are high power. So we'll take a look here at exactly what it looks like in Rise of Kingdom for comparison. So this is the cost of the migration pages in Rise of Kingdom. So if you are a 10 million account, it's one page. 
as opposed to the last one if you are 95 million account or lower it's 65 pages now here is a huge tip you are able to buy these passports or these pages using alliance credit so if you are not saving them yet i recommend that you do so because this is going to be a huge free to play way and basically the only way that free to play can change servers once they've chosen one uh, so this is going to be huge and we can see on the right side that the cost otherwise because there will be a new pack introduced there will be a full pack that you can buy in the store and usually it resets once a month so for example you can see here on the column if you are a 80 million power account you require 50 pages that is 30 million alliance credit which is a lot or 770 us dollars right so it is exceptionally expensive to change server now this is most likely not going to be as expensive in call dragons because there is quite a few differences in the game especially the amount of credit that you gain in alliance is lower in this game than in Rise of kingdom so i'm expecting the amount of pages required is also going to be lower but just to give you an idea of how expensive it is to change uh, which is why you really, really want to find your family and stick with them for a long time in these home servers because otherwise uh, you can really screw yourself. And basically, this is one of the things that makes a lot of people quit the game in Rise of Kingdom. Their server dies out after a war and they lose and then everybody quits, changes the server and the server dies. And then the people who don't have enough uh, passports or don't have money to spend in the uh, passport needed, they get stuck on that server and then they quit the game. So this is a huge thing. So I'm expecting a bit of a difference because otherwise this could be very very dangerous for the future of color dragons uh, we'll have to see exactly what it looks like but i'm just giving you the truth as it is for rise of kingdom i would say a lot of the people that i know that play this game have quit it is one of the reasons what they did now where can you get these migration permits as it says here you can get them from the alliance store and a new monthly bundle and i'll show you exactly what it looks like in the alliance store if you come here basically you see this at the top i have eight million of these uh, this is what you get from Alliance Tech, Training Behemoth, uh, Alliance Help, Constructing Buildings. Basically, participating in Alliance uh, activities in general will make you earn these credits. You know, doing literally like anything like just this, for example, you'll see my credits are going up. I'm donating, donating, and there it is. I'm gaining credit. Uh, so this is going to be what it is. And then when you're going to come here, obviously, it's going to be one of these things going to be a passport. The cost could be similar to Rise of Kingdom or lower, in my opinion. It might be. Uh, but... This is why if you currently have any of them, I know a lot of people spend these to buy name changes as well as a relocation, a TP spot basically. And they are quite expensive as you can see. So um, obviously I have spent millions of these tokens on relocation before, but I've also been saving because I kind of knew this was coming at some point. Uh, so if you haven't been saving, well, start now. Of course, do not be spending this on relocation anymore, especially if you're free to play. If you're starting this game recently or if you're looking at this video and you have just started uh i would say never ever ever spend these credits ever in your life on anything but passports because this is the only way you're going to be able to get them and it makes a very very big difference to have available credits to spend when you do want to move if some emergency happens uh so this is really important now going into the store uh just show you this is what it's going to be the pack with the new passports it's going to be like one of these packs so you basically, you know, spend six bucks, well, in Canadian, like five, 10, 25, I think, and then 60 or 50 and then 100. Uh, so this is going to be like that. Uh, the first pack usually has like one passport at $5. Then the $10 pack has like two. And then the other one uh, at 15 or 20 bucks has like, uh, I think, four or five. Uh, and then it, it ends up being very expensive to get a lot of pages. Because as I said, a account with like, for example, 50 or 60 million will need dozens of these pages. And uh, as you said, if you get only four or five for like 20 bucks, well, you are going to need to be buying them regularly. Uh, these usually will reset uh, once a month. Uh, so you'll be able to buy the full pack every month. Uh, it is kind of how it works in Rise of Kingdom. Now, this is obviously not set in stone. I'm talking about my Rise of Kingdom experience. I've played Rise of Kingdom since the day it came out. So I only thing that I've known is this. Uh, but it could be a bit different in Call of the Dragons, and I do hope that it is because uh, I think it could be very dangerous for the game if it's that expensive uh, for the reasons that I just said before. Now, other things that will be coming with the Home Kingdoms will be season progress of 50 days. So the seasons are going to last exactly 50 days, and you're going to get your rewards right away. So this is how it's going to go. You're going to be in your home realm. You're going to join a new season. You're going to get matchmaking and then transported into the new season. You're going to fight. After 50 days, you win or you lose, you get your rewards, and then you're back on your home realm. You prepare, and then a few weeks later, sometimes it's even a month or a month and a half in between seasons. Hopefully, it's not that long in this game. Maybe 10, 15 days would be good. You are back home. There's no war. There's no enemy. You're just with your alliance and your people, and then you farm 
and then when the new seasons are open you join them matchmaking happens and you do it so it's rinse and repeat that's how it works in wars of kingdom and it is obviously looking like it's going to work like this in this game now the only other thing to think about too is that this sometimes cause civil war for example if you have a server a home server that has two massive alliances that are allies and are working together and then there's some season that happens big drama war whatever uh, you lose they come back on home kingdom and they're like we want to change the leadership civil war this is the kind of stuff that happens so you are going to have to deal with the politics of your home server and then when you join a new server for the season you're gonna have to deal with the politics of that season so it does add a little bit of spice to the game and i do like that part obviously we'll have to see exactly what it looks like when it comes they're also going to be bringing season quests which is going to be uh when the season's going on this is again exactly like rise of kingdom you have a ton of rewards being given for example in rise of kingdom the biggest rewards you can get are going to be city skins and special equipment and stuff like that that is very high earned and very expensive if you were to earn it the other way or sometimes there is no other way to earn it so it is important to gain uh victories in seasons as well as uh, for example you need 30 million uh, merits to get very very good rewards in a season or 10 million merits 20 million merits all these are going to be uh, marks where if you reach that point you do gain rewards there's also you know if you spend hours building territory uh, if you win uh, multiple behemoths if you capture the dragon at the end you get a lot of rewards so this is going to be uh, very good because the rewards in rise of kingdom are huge for winning a season and hopefully they are going to be the same in this and you only get rewarded if you are active playing and killing enemies. So it's also a way of filtering your players. Uh, alliance rules are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, alliance can only be created in the home realm. And you can only join alliance from that realm. So when you do go into your season, you have to stick with the people from your own realm. You can't go to the other side if you're losing and stuff like that. Uh, there won't be any resurgence, I don't think, anymore. Uh, so this is going to, again, make sure you go to a home server with a leadership a team of people that you want to play with for a long time otherwise you will get screwed the union system will be upgraded to the warband system so people from the same server will be able to warband together this means that you're going to be able to share territory buff passes behemoth buffs and all kind of stuff even if they're not in for example in the main alliance if you're in the same warband you still get all the buff that the alliance gets so for research training speed all kind of stuff so this is a very very welcome change and will make it so that people have a lot more ease of access when playing the game and have multiple sub alliances to build in one server now that's also another thing that happens a lot is that in one home kingdom you will have a main alliance and then multiple sub alliance that are attached to that one and they are going to all go into a season together and then you can build fortresses territory you can have them all with people we're obviously going to have to look at the amount of limit of players that can be on one home server but it really adds a lot of strategy and planning to the game which adds a lot of fun in my opinion now for the very interesting part of this which is again same as rise of kingdom the high king role so this is the r5 of the alliance that controls the dragon in your home server so in our case in tfs the high king is going to be jason g uh, so for those of you who are uh, aware of how it works basically the king has a lot of powers they are going to be able you can see here they have kingdom title they have skills they have i guess rewards chest so in rise of kingdom the king is able to give chest every few uh weeks so or i think every month they give chess to basically some of the per players that they decide uh they also have titles that are specific that gives you buff for different things so like there's a title that gives you 10 percent research speed for example which is obviously very huge and it stacks with runes usually so uh this is going to be interesting uh we'll have to see exactly what they bring from rise of kingdom there but it also says of course that it is going to be uh the one that decides about migration uh so a lot of this uh basically the high king has a lot of power in who can migrate to their home server so for example jason is going to be the leader of our server and he is going to be able to allow example someone from another server wants to migrate to ours and want to join tfs well they will have to message him and then if they're like 100 million power well he will have to adjust the limit of who can enter a server so he'll be able to say no one is allowed to migrate in my server and block it or he can say only people that are lower than 20 million power can join or he can say you know uh, someone can join 100 million and stuff like that uh, so it's a very uh, controlled the king of the server has a lot of power again on what happens and they have obviously a maximum quota for how many people can migrate into it and there's a special migration system where you can basically give a special right to one or two account to migrate even though your quota is reached and stuff like that uh, so this is all very detailed and we'll have more detail when it comes but if you're not an r5 you don't really have to deal with it too much it just shows you that uh, the r5 of the alliance that controls the home server has 
all the power as to the future of that server. So once again, make sure to join a place where you trust the team and the R5 in charge. Now, I've been playing Rise of Kingdom for a very, very long time. I don't really play anymore, but I have seen a lot of server transfers, a lot of drama, a lot of civil wars and stuff like that. And if you have any question about home realms whatsoever, whether you're in my alliance or not, make sure to ask. I would be happy to explain to you how it works again. Also, one thing that I want to talk about, which is a huge warning, in my opinion, to the game devs and the community, is that the biggest downfall of Rise of Kingdom, in my opinion, in my experience, is when they did these home servers. When you did join these uh, new servers for War, for example, you had uh, a pack that is called Crystal Tech, for those of you who have heard about it, meaning that when you would join a new server, for example, like right now, we just joined a new season in uh, Call of Dragons. Of course, it's not the new Home Kingdom yet, but it is a new season. You would have a special building that you could build. It's a research building and it has season research. So very similar to how policies work currently. This is a season specific and every season you need to basically retrain them and redo them, right? Uh, so in this case, it's free, it's prestige, and I do hope they keep it like that because that's great. In the way the Rise of Kingdom works, it's Crystal, which you earn over time by participating in the game, killing Darklings and stuff like that. It's the same, but there's also packs that you can buy with money that give you Crystal, and you need to buy these packs in order to max out uh, this research, for example. So if you wanted to reach all the way here to get all the healing, you wouldn't be able to as a free-to-play. You would need to spend money on the pack in order to have enough Crystal, or in our case, I guess, Prestige, to get this far in the tree. This is, in my opinion, uh, what was the biggest downfall of Rise of Kingdom because you realistically couldn't play a season or a KVK if you didn't spend because you would be so much weaker than the spenders that you would have very less of an effect in the field and would be just getting killed all the time. Uh, so I do hope it doesn't come to it because every single player that I've ever played Rise of Kingdom with at this point has quit almost. And the two reasons are Migration and Crystal Tech. Uh, so now they're bringing Migration that is obviously going to be paid, uh, but there is a way to do it free to play. Crystal, on the other hand, there is no way to do it free to play. If you do not have money, you will be weaker than every single person who has money. It's the case currently in the game. Yes, that is how the game works. But as a free to play, um, you can still reach a very high decent amount of power and eventually have T5 and have max heroes you're not gonna have every hero max you're gonna have a few but the one that you do have will be powerful and you'll still be impactful uh so i am praying that they do not introduce this kind of crystal tech it would be basically paying money to earn prestige and that would completely wreck the game in my opinion as it already has struggles keeping a players active in the game uh, so doing that would be terrible so i really 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 hope that it doesn't happen let me know what you think about home servers and make sure to ask any questions you have, if you do have them, in the comments below or DM me in-game. I don't mind. I will help as many people as I can if you have questions. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on my next video.